Now let's look at specific examples of heat exchange, simple examples. And let's see how um, we can compute entropy and the change of entropy for uh, these simple processes. I will start with um, um, water warming up. Let's say I have some water, mass M. Um, and let's say this water is at 20 degrees centigrade. And um, as it warms up, uh, the temperature of water goes up to 30 degrees. So um, how does the entropy of this cup of water change? I know that when I exchange heat, the change of entropy is the amount of heat that I exchanged divided by temperature. So what's the amount of heat that I exchanged as I was um, heating up from 20 degrees to 30 degrees? The amount of heat is positive because I gained thermal energy. And um, this is last week's material. This is C, where C is a heat capacity, specific heat capacity times M times delta T. Delta T is the change of uh, temperature. So the change in entropy is Cm delta T divided by T. Uh, now, there is one um, subtle um, uh, difficulty here that you may have noticed. Um, and the difficulty is that as I heat up, uh, my temperature changes. Temperature isn't always the same. So initially I was at 20 degrees, and when I got the, my first one joules of uh, thermal energy, my entropy changed by one over my initial temperature. Uh, but then as my temperature grows, uh, um, uh, when I'm at 25 degrees, each joule of energy that I get gains me one joule divided by this high temperature. And so since my temperature changes, what I have to do is I have to integrate over this expression. My total change in entropy will be an integral over C times M times delta T divided by T. By the way, one thing that I think I didn't mention is that this equation for the entropy is one of those equations where you have to use the Kelvin scale, otherwise it doesn't work. This has to be in Kelvin. Okay, so let's take this integral. This integral is heat capacity times mass times delta T divided by T. Um, and this is from 20 to 30 degrees. If I convert 20 and 30 to Kelvin, here I will get 193. And here I will get uh, 300. So I'm taking this integral from 293 to 303. Um, this is a simple integral, dt over t. The heat capacity and the mass don't depend on temperature. So this is Cm times the log of t between 293 and 303, which is C times m um, times the log of CO3 minus the log of 293. So this will be a positive number. The heat capacity of water is, um, um, is 4,200. And if I move the mass, I will compute this number. And this will give me the change of entropy of my water. Um, the units of entropy are joules divided by Kelvin. And now if um, um, I'm looking at the opposite process where my temperature was 30 degrees and I cooled down to 20 degrees, then I will do exactly the same thing except my bounds will change, my bounds of integration. So I will be integrating from 303 to 293. And this will change the order of logs. I will be getting C times M 
times log of 293 minus the log of 303. Well, I will be solving a few problems towards the end, so this I will apply this um, to practical problems and it will become clearer how this how this works. But the basic idea is that when you exchange heat and at the same time your temperature changes, the change in entropy is now an integral, an integral like this. Let's think about um, another example. Let's say I have a cube of ice in water. And let's say this cube of ice is melting. Question is, uh, how does the entropy of this cube of ice change as it melts from the being an ice cube to being um, some amount of water? So let's think. I know that my change in entropy is um, the amount of heat that I gain or give away divided by temperature. Uh, so the temperature of um, ice melting is zero degrees, which is 273 Kelvin. Now, nice thing about this ice melting is that um, the temperature doesn't change while the ice melts. So there is no reason to take any integrals. The amount of heat is the mass of my ice cube times its latent heat of uh, fusion. So I will divide that by 273. And this will be the amount of entropy that my ice gains as it turns from ice to water. The, um, um, the units are joules over Kelvin. OK, so now let's put this into practice. Um, I will go, uh, I have one question on my slide number seven, and I have three problems on uh, slides number eight, nine, and 10. I will, I will go over them um, in that sequence. So let's start with the question. The question is, it's kind of a tricky question. This question um, asks you, tells you that there are two blocks, A and B. And it tells you that they uh, exchange um, uh, thermal energy, which way it goes, we don't know. And as a result, uh, both of their entropies change. We have four sets of A and B. And there are four sets of numbers for the entropy change of A, 8, 5, 3, and 9. And there are four sets of numbers for the entropy change. Negative 3, negative 8, negative 5, negative 2. So I'm guessing that since these numbers are negative and these numbers are positive, block A is heating up and block B is cooling down. The question is that these numbers are not in order, so we have to match um, each number to its um, uh, pairing number uh, um, and we have to do it for all four pairs. Um, so since we don't really know what's happening here, what are the temperatures, uh, there is no specific computation that we can make. One thing, one, uh, thing that we can use is the fact that total change in entropy should never go down. It, it, it always goes, uh, either goes up or stays the same. So the total change in entropy, which is change in the entropy of A plus the change in the entropy of B, has to be more than zero. It cannot be less than zero. So let's think, what does that, um, give us let's start let's start with the lowest entropy change of a let's start with number three um, so I want to add something to this number three so that the sum is not less than zero and there are only two possibilities I could pair it with my negative two or negative three there are no other possibilities. For any other pairing, my net change in entropy would be, would be positive. Yeah, so negative. Now, what about this, this guy over here, five? 
what do I add to it so that I get um, a non-negative number? I have three options. This could either be negative two, negative three, or negative five. For number eight, basically any of these numbers would work. And for number nine, also any of these numbers would work. So it looks like I have multiple options. I could pair this T to negative two. I could pair this five with negative three. I could pair this eight with negative five. And I could pair this nine with negative eight. And then in all four cases, um, I would have an increasing entropy. Um, and that's what I want. So this is the pairing. Three goes with negative two, eight goes with negative five, five goes with negative three and nine goes with negative eight. Okay, so now let's do uh, some problems. Um, uh, problem 27.2, um, you have uh, some sort of gas, and this gas is at 132 degrees, and they tell you that this gas is expanding and that the expansion is isothermal. Isothermal means temperature doesn't change. And then, then they tell you that the entropy of the gas increased by 46 joules per Kelvin. The question is how much energy was transferred as heat um, during this expansion. So this, this um, problem is pretty simple. Um, uh, we have a formula that relates heat, temperature, and um, entropy. The formula is delta S is equal to delta Q divided by T. Temperature doesn't change, so there are no integrals involved here. We could just use this formula straight away. And then delta Q in this case is simply delta S times T. Delta S is 46 joules per Kelvin. I have to translate my 132 degrees to Kelvins. That's 132 plus 273. So I have 46 times 405. So whatever this number is, that's the amount of heat in joules that was um, absorbed by, by this gas as it was expanding uh, at, at this temperature. Let's move to the second problem on slide number nine. In this problem, you have 200 grams of aluminum. Let's say this is an aluminum block. And they tell us that the specific heat is 900 joules per kilo per calorie. They also tell us that this aluminum is at 100 degrees centigrade. Uh, we put this aluminum in water. There are 50 grams of water at 20 degrees. There are four questions. The first question is, what's the equilibrium temperature? The second question is, uh, by how much does the entropy of aluminum change? But the third question is, by how much does the entropy of water change? And the final question is, by how much does the total entropy change? Let's start with question number one. This is, again, this is the last week's material. So I have um, some aluminum and some water. And when they are mixed, aluminum will give away heat and water will receive heat. As aluminum cools down, it gives away this much energy, uh, this much uh, thermal energy, its mass times uh, its heat capacity times the change in temperature. And um, 
This equals to the amount of energy that water receives, which is mass of water times, times heat capacity of water times the change in water temperature. Let's plug in some numbers. Mass of, of aluminum is 0.2, heat capacity is 900, and its temperature is changing from 100 to this equilibrium that we don't know. For the water, we have 50 grams, the heat capacity is 4,200, and its temperature is changing um, from uh, 20 to this equilibrium. From here, we can find the equilibrium temperature. That's the only unknown. Uh, I will solve this in one go. Uh, this is 0 0.2 times 900 times 100 um, minus 0 0.05 times 4200, sorry, plus 4200 times 20 divided by 0 0.2 times 900 plus 0 0.05 times 4200. Let me compute this number and um, get back to you. So I put this into my calculator and I'm getting uh, approximately 57 degrees. So this is my equilibrium temperature. Now let's see by how much did the entropy of aluminum change while it was um, cooling down. So the change, change in entropy is the amount of heat that it gave away divided by temperature. This is um, C of aluminum times mass of aluminum times delta T divided by temperature. Since temperature is changing, I have to take an integral from 100 degrees to 57 degrees. And I have to make sure that I convert it to Kelvins. So this will turn into um, 373 degrees. And this will turn into uh, 300 and 30 degrees of Kelvin. Okay, so let's take this integral. The integral is heat capacity times mass uh, times log of 330 minus the log of 373. This is 900 times 0.2 times the difference of these logs. Um, let me quickly plug this into my calculator and I'm getting I'm getting negative 22. So the change of entropy in aluminum is negative 22 joules per Kelvin. Let's do exactly the same thing with, with water. Um, the equation is very similar, except now we will be using mass of water and um, heat capacity of water. Um, and my temperature is changing from 20 degrees, which is 293 to 57 degrees, which is 373. No, 373. No, 330. Sorry. So it's exactly the same integral. Heat capacity of water is 4200. Mass of water is 0 0.05. I have the log of 330 minus the log of 293. And that number will be equal to
uh, approximately 25 joules per Kelvin. So entropy of water changed by positive 25 joules per Kelvin. And now the final question is really easy to address. What's the total change in entropy? Aluminum lost 22 units of entropy, the water gained 25 units of entropy. The total change in entropy is three joules per gallon. This is a positive number, entropy went up. Uh, this is good, this is what we expected. Now let's look at the final um, problem, problem 27.4. In this problem, we have a thermos which is insulated with 130 grams of water at 80 degrees. We put 12 grams of ice at zero degrees. And um, the questions are basically similar. What's the equilibrium temperature once all of the ice um, melts? Change in the entropy of ice cube, change in the entropy of water, and change in the net entropy. Let's start with the equilibrium temperature. Um, so um, water will give away some uh, thermal energy, which is sea water times mass water times delta T. And the ice will do two things. Ice will first melt, that's mass of ice times latent heat of fusion of uh, ice. And then this ice that's now water will, will warm up. So mass of initial ice times heat capacity of water now, because ice is now water, times delta G. Let's plug in some numbers. The heat capacity of water is 4,200. Mass of this piece of water is um, 0.13 kilos. And the temperature is changing from 80 degrees to something, some equilibrium temperature that I, I, um, I don't know at this point yet. Um, so now ice, we have 12 grams of ice um, and the uh, heat of uh, fusion of ice is uh, it's, uh, what is it? It's 334 joules per kilo, and then the same amount of water that now appeared will have to heat up to the equilibrium temperature, which is unknown, and it will heat up from zero degrees. So I'm not gonna solve this equation. Uh, the solution is very similar to what we did before, but from this equation, I will get my TA equilibrium um, it will be a number, and I will uh, write down this number here for later use. Now, by how much did the entropy of ice change? Well, th there were two stages in ice's evolution. First of all, it melted. Um, and while it melted, um, its entropy changed a little bit. And then it turned into water and water heated up. So um, this is when water heats up. This is how much entropy it gains then. In the first case, temperature is fixed. It's zero degrees, which is 273 Kelvins. So there is no integration. We will simply compute this, the amount of heat which is mass times heat of fusion. So 0 0.012 times 334 divided by 273 is the amount of um, entropy gained by ice while melting. And then we will take this integral, C times M 
I may as well plug in numbers 4200 times uh, 0 0.012 dt over t. We're taking this integral from zero degrees to the equilibrium temperature in kelvins. And uh, in the end, we will get 0 0.012 times 334 over 273 plus 4200 times 0 0.012 times ln of T equilibrium minus ln of 273. So whatever this number turns out to be, you would have to use your equilibrium temperature, it will give us the change in ice, yeah, in the entropy of ice. For, for the water, things are similar, except they're even simpler. The water cooled down, it gave away this much heat. And since the temperature was changing, we need to take an integral. The integral is from 80 degrees, which is um, 353 Kelvin, uh, up to this equilibrium temperature. And so when we integrate this, we will get 4200 times the mass of water times log of the um, equilibrium temperature minus the log of 353. Um, this will give us uh, the change in entropy of water, the change in entropy of ice will be positive, the change of entropy of water will be negative. And then for part D, you simply sum them up. The net change in entropy is the change in entropy of ice plus the change in entropy of water. And if you got a positive number here, you know that you solved everything correctly because entropy is supposed to go up, it's never supposed to go down. So the negative number here would mean that you did something wrong. So this is all I have for today. Um, uh, the final homework is half the normal um, uh, length. It's made of only five problems. And all of them are kind of similar to what I did here in this lecture. So hopefully they will be um, you know, simple to, to solve. But if you have problems with, with your homework, feel free to join the Zoom help room on Wednesday and on Friday from 12.30 to 2.30.